This is the larvae of the greater wax moth, Galeria melanella, which has been used in infection studies since the middle of the 20th century. Over the last 20 years, research using Galeria has rapidly expanded, with 2022 listing almost 350 hits on PubMed. Major recent papers featuring Galeria include the development of a tuberculosis infection model with the ability to partially replace mice studies and the finding that the saliva of these larvae can degrade plastic, which has the potential to be repurposed for biodegradation and recycling purposes. Despite the exciting research going on around the world using Galeria, there is little consensus on how the larvae are reared, acquired and stored before being used in experiments. Whilst rearing protocols have been described, many researchers still purchase their larvae from pet or bait shops, where their origins and colony health status are not known. Furthermore, it appears that pet shop bought larvae likely go through a non-chemical treatment method to prevent them from spinning silk but the exact method to do this is not disclosed. The health status and prior treatment of Galeria destined for research is particularly critical in the context of infection experiments, where the larvae should, ideally, be raised without the inclusion of antibiotics in the diet that they are fed and be as physiologically healthy as possible in order to generate reliable, reproducible data. Here in the Living Systems Institute at the University of Exeter, we are pleased to showcase our own Galeria breeding colony and share some of the insights on the process of rearing these insects in the laboratory. Whilst many researchers will recognise Galeria in their larval form, these moths in this jar here are likely to be far less familiar. In this jar, we placed 50 last instar larvae and allowed them to go through pupation and are closed as the adults. You can see a female here with her protruding mouth parts, and this is a male with its more snub-nosed appearance. The Galeria adults do not eat and live for between two to three weeks depending on their biological sex and external factors such as temperature. It's in here that we allow the omegos to mate, and we place this folded baking parchment in the jar as an attractive site for oviposition, as the females like to lay their embryos in crevices for protection. The Galeria embryos are laid in clutches, each with a protective coating named the Corion. Because of the waxy coating of the baking parchment, the embryos can be brushed off the paper and collected into a petri dish. Here's an example of the number of embryos we can collect from a single mating jar after 24 hours of oviposition. To raise these embryos to the last instar, we place them into smaller rearing jars with a good amount of diet. We make the diet in-house following previously published protocols. It's composed of flowers, yeast and milk powders, honey and glycerol, though the honey can be substituted for cane sugar boiled to create a sugar syrup. A clutch of 150 to 200 embryos is added to each larval rearing pot and the pots are then placed back into our incubator, which is maintained at 30 degrees in darkness. The embryos are then left to hatch and over the course of four to six weeks the larvae feed and grow until they reach the last instar, which is their final larval stage before they begin the process of pupation. It's from these pots that we select our larvae for experiments and we also use these jars to seed our adult jars so the life cycle and the colony can continue. When both the adult and larval jars are spent, the entire contents is discarded into bags and the air removed. We then pump in carbon dioxide to begin the process of euthanizing the excess insects. The air is removed again and the bag can now be placed into the freezer for culling, with a preferential temperature of below 30 degrees Celsius to mitigate suffering. The jars themselves are placed into the freezer and everything remains in here for a minimum of 24 hours. After this period of freezing, the cold insects and spent food can be autoclaved, the jars are removed from the freezer, washed with hot water and filled with Vercon solution for a minimum of 24 hours to decontaminate. They can then be reused and in this way we absolutely minimise the plastic waste generated from Galeria rearing in the laboratory. At the Galeria Melanella Research Centre we are passionate about ensuring the best rearing conditions for our Galeria. 
If you have any questions related to the process, wish to speak to us about training or setting up your own colony, please get in touch. We are also able to supply laboratories within the UK with top quality laboratory reared Galeria. You can find us on Twitter at GMRCUK and on our website, gmrcuk.org.